Thank you, Helen, for introduction. And hello, everyone. Um, it was very um, um, great pleasure for me to have an opportunity to speak um, in this webinar series. And uh, my name is Haitong Zan. I'm assistant professor in um, biomedical engineering and robotics uh, from Ursula Park Institute. Today, I'm going to talk about a little bit different flavor from other talk. Probably it's more engineering focus from engineering and robotics perspective, how we can contribute toward uh, the, the challenge we're facing with COVID-19. And before I start, I would like to acknowledge all the team and collaborator um, where we have a multi-disciplinary uh, institutional or even multi-continental collaborator um, from United States and Nigeria and Japan, um, where we have BIDMC and CPHS, as well as uh, African University of Science and Technology uh, National Hospital of Abuja from, from Nigeria. And, and I also appreciate the support from NIH to allow us to do this research in a, in a timely manner. And i uh, like to give a special credit to Dr. Ryosuke Tomura. He led this project and um, basically built this robot um, from scratch once we realized the need during this pandemic. OK, let me start from uh, why we are doing this kind of project and, and why robot were you know, necessary toward COVID-19. I need to start from um, describing uh, why we need to have those imaging devices at the first place. As we already know that COVID-19 is already providing significant impact. And at the same time, we, the good news is we already know that there's a lot of like effective way to detect COVID-19, including the previous presentation um, being, being prevent, presented. Um, what, what PCR or antibody provide us is the qualitative information, how much, you know, uh, if we are uh, infected with COVID-19 or, or not. Then the next thing what patients want to know when they go to hospital is how much this virus is affecting the patient's lung and how urgent the treatment they should receive. Uh, if the patient should go to ICU right away or the patient should be isolated or should be seri quarantine, uh, which require more detailed analysis understanding the situation of the patient's lung where diagnostic, in, uh, diagnostic imaging will play a critical role such as uh, X-ray imaging, computer tomography, CT, uh, what which sound has been widely used in hospital in United States or around the world. Um, the limitation of those diagnostic imaging currently we identify is the fact that X-ray or, or CT are effective imaging device. We can see the you know, picture of the lung, but accessibility for such device um, is limited um, given the fact that uh, we need to bring the patient to those machine room, which is cumbersome and has a risk of transmission and also need to sterilize the machine um, every single usage between different patients. And, and more importantly, for the resource limited environment, including African country that we're working with, um, the, the accessibility for those devices itself is, is not trivial. Therefore, we need to find a way to provide more cost-effective and um, effective diagnostic imaging to wider population around the world. This is where we're focusing on lung ultrasound, which is currently used um, diagnostic uh, imaging approach for COVID-19, which do have a high sensitivity to pneumonia. Actually, um, it, is also, it is actually more sensitive than X-ray and it's extremely low cost because of the presence of point of care ultrasound system emerging these days and with no radiation and it's quite portable. This is why we thought about ultrasound can be you know, a good alternative and effective solution to diagnose patient status of the lung. Then here's some example, how lung ultrasound is being performed on a patient is following the established uh, clinical workflow where they have to scan um, in total 10 regions, like five regions for each side of the lung, including anterior, lateral, and posterior side of the lung. And typical sign of COVID-19 in lung ultrasound, including those like a straight line up here uh, toward that direction, which is known as a patchy B line, as well as pleural uh, sickening, the, the change of the um, uh, pleural line, as, as well as uh, sub sub pleural uh, consolidation, or there's other signature that we can observe from COVID-19 patients. Then we know that lung ultrasound is gonna be effective. Then why we still need to have robotics here? Um, fundamental challenge of current lung ultrasound to be used for COVID-19 is a limitation that there's a limited accessibility toward the 
the operator who can perform long ultrasound effectively. And, and ultrasound is the procedure where you can see from the picture require an operator to physically interact with the patient. They need to hold the ultrasound probe and you know, touch the region to region to get a required information for them to diagnose this. Therefore, it's highly user dependent or operator dependent. Therefore, to have accurate diagnosis, you need to have someone who is well trained, which is not that widely available, unfortunately, um, in this current situation. And, and more importantly, you may notice that um, the, the fact that the physician and uh, sonographer uh, and the patient need to interact physically, which also impose huge risk of transmission, uh, which we want to solve. So what we want to propose in, in this project here is we are making a, a robotic solution to allow lung ultrasound procedure can be performed in a least resource limited environment, does not impose um, huge costs compared to X-ray or CT. At the same time, minimize the risk of transmission because we don't, we're making a robotic si system which eliminate the need that the doctor need to sitting right next to the patient anymore. And, and this system is, uh, is structured like a gun tree where is designed to be able to scan all the region where, which is required to perform diagnostic uh, imaging of, of lung uh, ultrasound procedure. And, and the, this robot is consisted by several components, including the mechanical part, which can allow to scan from the top and from the size, uh, side, as well as some safety measure, uh, we call it as a passive end effector, where this robot is only allowed to apply certain amount of force, which is not exceeding the limit. In other words, we mechanically make this system to be safe, not going to damage uh, and providing any harm on the patient which is related to one of the work that uh, Dr. Tsumura, uh, the postdoctoral fellow uh, on this study, um, performed a similar project for prenatal imaging uh, undergo with a human study for validation. And here is actual demonstration of the system. Um, you can see the robot can scan and move around different region of the body where um, it's currently showing um, the anterior region where we have a uh, three camera which capture the patient body from the top and from the side and where ultrasound image can be provided in real time, can be recorded, can be transferred that information to the doctor for them for uh, diagnosis and or evaluation. The, 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 the robot arm can move um, from the side, uh, can provide the lateral view and uh, when patient uh, flip side of the body, they can also scan um, the back side of the body, which will cover whole region where required to do COVID-19 diagnosis. And, and we also asked the um, uh, emergency physician to evaluate the score of the image collected by the robot compared to the image we acquire from manual scan. We can see that the score, which is evaluated by doctor, bas basically um, um, scoring the image, um, image quality, where we can see that the comparable image quality can be acquired with the robot compared to manual scan uh, without using the robot system. So where, we, we, where our robot is right now, we, we started this project 2020 um, April, and we, we start design from scratch and we made a robot. And now the robot is transferred to Nigeria and, and hopefully this robot will be able to um, testing on actual patient subject there. Um, we are very excited about this initiative. Um, lastly, I would like to appreciate all the collaborators who support the project as well as the funding source from NIH to, to allow us to develop this new engineering technology. Um, thank you very much for attention and let me know if you have any question. Thank you.